All right, everyone. It is against the odds time. We are finally playing Inverter of Truth, and we get to play another sweet card that people have been asking about for a long time. So this is kind of a two-for-one this week on Against the Odds. <laughs> Ooh, Valakut. Here's Inverter of Truth. Watery Grave tapped. Next turn we can muddle for our Torpor Orb. Eventually we're going to have to Ghost Quarter this Valakut. Yeah, there's another muddle. All right, let's transmute. Get a Torpor Orb. Oh, yeah. We also have Hunted Horror. So with a Torpor Orb, we don't die to our own Inverter of Truth. That's the good news. If this is a straight red green, I like our odds more than the blue version. At least we don't have to worry about counters. No ramp. Ooh. All right, let's uh, just Torpor Orb, play a Tap Shambling Vent, and this might be the time when we Ghost Quarter that Valakut. And then we can play our Inverter next turn and just try to win. Elder and a Mountain. All right, let's Ghost Quarter right now. Get rid of Valakut. Gets Forest. Ooh, another Inverter. Sweet. All right, Swamp. And we are going to resolve an Inverter of Truth. Thanks to Torpor Orb, we don't exile all except two cards of our library. Or exile our library, then shuffle in the two cards in our graveyard. It's a pretty fast clock. How do you beat a 6-6 six, six flyer? <laughs> The risk of this is if they can kill our Torpor Orb in response, which they shouldn't be able to do main deck, then we basically just die. All right, Inverter down. I don't think our opponent can kill it. It is pretty huge. All right, they're going to sack their Elder. This could mean that a Titan is coming down. Titan is also huge, but it won't trigger when it enters the battlefield, only when it attacks. So that's another benefit of our Torpor Orb. <laughs> We get to randomly hose people and play Inverter of Truth. There's land. Looks like they're going to cast a Titan. There's Titan. No triggers, thanks to Torpor Orb. Uh, I'm worried about dying if we cast the second Inverter. I think we have to not do that. I think our plan is attack with Inverter, put our opponent to 10, play Godless Shrine. Then we're going to have to path the Titan so they can't get lands, muddle the Scape Shift, and then next turn we can attack with Inverter and Colonnade for Xaxes. So yeah, let's uh, path the Titan. They get another land, which isn't great, but... Oh, this might be working. We might get it right off the bat against Scape Shift. Since this isn't the blue version, they can't just counter our Muddle. They're gonna try to cast something at their begin of com beginning of combat phase. Uh, Alright, they dismember Inverter. And dismember Inverter. Well, this makes our choice easier. Uh, flooded Strand, Crack Flooded Strand. Now we can just tack with Shambling Vents and leave up Muddle, which is the, the uh, safest way. Fire up the Shambling Vent, and that does it! <laughs> one for one! <laughs> Our opponent didn't know what hit him. Thought Seizes and Negates. Spreading Sea doesn't really do it in this matchup. Probably don't need Dismember. I guess we can go down the our one Dust Elemental. I guess Languish is the other cut. Ooh, all right. Well, we have some interaction, which is good. Good old 7-7 seven, seven for two. Fortunately, it can't really attack for much because it makes two 3-3 three, three green Centaur tokens, which have protection from black. Search for Tomorrow's Exile. Oh my god, another one. All right, we're just going to go Tapped Watery Grave, pass the turn. I don't want to lose too much life against this stack if we can help it. Elder. There's a land. All right, let's Thought Seize. Beast Within, Ancient Grudge, Thrag Tusk. They could just Beast Within one of our lands? Yeah, let's take Thrag Tusk. If they want to Beast Within our land, more power to them. I guess we can hunt, Hunted Horror, make a 7-7, seven, seven, and then just path one of the tokens? That might not be the, the craziest thing. And then Inverter of Truth blocks it anyway? I don't know. So they have Ancient Grudge, Beast Within, and an Unknown. Hushwing Griff would be nice, because that gets around the Ancient Grudge. Another path? Alright. Well, since we drew another path, we're going we're going hunting. <laughs> oh, get a swamp. Yup, bet you didn't expect this opponent. <laughs> oh hunted horror. <laughs> seven seven, trample for two mana. Our opponent gets two 3-3 three, three green Centaur tokens. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, 
uh, things you don't expect to happen in the modern cues. Hunted horror. Our opponent is frantically reading. Yep, you get your tokens. The plan is we can just path those tokens and then beat down with our hunted horror. They might beast within it, and that would be fine, I guess. No, nope, not yet. Are they going to attack with both or one? They're going to attack with both. Alright, so let's path one of them. Opponent gets in for three. If they let us untap, we can even protect this with our negate and just try to win real quick. We take three. There's beast within. Ooh, Hushwing is good. Yeah, let's leave it back. Let's leave it back on defense. They're going to sack it anyway. Oh man, if they drew a Titan and go land Titan, we can play Hushwing Griff and just <laughs> wreck them again. Hushwing Griff, untap, path the Titan, hunted horror <laughs> to make another 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> oh, that would be so sweet. If they attack, we're going to block. That's why he left it back. Sure. Oh, the did they draw a titan? We know one of their cards is Ancient Grudge. Oh, they didn't. All right. Well, let's uh, Hushwing. Flooded Strand is excellent. So now we get to attack with Hushwing, play a Hunted Horror, and I think we just pass and leave up Negate in case they try to win with Scape Shift. Seven, eight, nine. We can't win next turn. We can win in two turns. Search for Tomorrows. All right. Cracks the Verdant Catacombs. Are they gonna go for it? There's escape shift. All right, let's negate. Hope they don't have a second one, or then we're in real trouble. I guess blue is fine. Negate the escape shift. Are we getting there? If they don't have another escape shift, I think we win. Ooh, and a ghost quarter. All right, let's attack with both. <laughs> Play our inverter of truth, and leave up our ghost quarter. Oh man, this way <laughs> we might be getting it. <laughs> Oh, come on, no scape shift, one time. Don't have the second one. We know one card's Ancient Grudge, which doesn't do anything. Yes! 2-0 <laughs> in our very first match. Oh, yes, Inverter of Truth getting it done. <laughs> oh, that shouldn't happen. All right, time for some more Inverter of Truth here on Against the Odds. Probe. He's storming us? What are they doing here? Delver? Looks like Delver. I would like to Serum Visions. I'm tempted just to kill Delver. Yeah, let's just kill Delver. Now we probably lose to a young Pyromancer. There's young Pyromancer. All right, let's lead on Thoughtseize. Get rid of Remand. Yeah, let's get rid of Remand. Flew to Delta, crack it, get an Island, Serum Visions. Flooded Strand. Yeah, I think we just bottom both. Pass the turn. We need to find a way to get rid of young Pyromancer or one of our orbs so we can start playing huge things without getting wrecked. So our opponent has a bolt and a... yeah, there's the bolt. So they're down to just a spell pierce and we are at 12 at 10. So we're gonna have to do something pretty quickly. One interesting option would be just to slam an Eater of Days and skip two turns. Ooh, there's a Griff. Well, I guess we do that. Let's play a Plains, pass the turn, let our opponent attack, we drop to seven, play a Griff. Hopefully they didn't draw a counter. It doesn't really matter though. Uh, they did. They drew a leak. All right. <laughs> we gotta hope our opponent whiffs. <laughs> we are gonna skip our next two turns to play this Eater of Days on defense. <laughs> All right. We skip two turns. If our opponent goes like land, 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 then we probably win. There's a land. Off to a good start. Come on, two more lands. <laughs> you can do it. Our opponent's going to attack for one into our Eater of Days. All right, we will block. Come on! More lands. More lands. I've never had to skip two turns before. Also, like, counters are not that great here either. Uh-oh. Cracking of the fetch is scary. What could they possibly need four mana for? Unless they just drew a land in our turn. Oh, they have black? This is Grixis? Then they lit they could just kill it, maybe? With what, though? You can't really dismember an Eater of Days. Doesn't die to go for the throw. Holigan's com- Oh my god! Oh my god! Alright. That does it. That does it. Oh boy. Alright. Now well, that was a good draw. Yeah, we took a risky line, but what can you do? I think we want Timelies here. And go down the Dust Elemental and a Muddle? Try it like that. Whew! If that- 
our opponent drew pretty well, and we lost when they mold to five, which is pretty bad. All right, Pluted Delta. I think we just got to get Watery Grave here. Serum Visions. Colonnade, Inverter of Truth, Serum Visions. All right, let's bottom the Inverter, top Serum Visions. Pass the turn. Do they have a Delver? Serum Visions. All right, not a Delver. All right, let's Serum Visions again. Timely, Haunted Horror, Shambling Vent. All right, let's uh, top both. Ooh, I probably should have taken the Timely next. All right, Colonnade, go. No, there's Serum Visions. Let's just Shambling Vent. Pass the turn. If our opponent plays a creature, we should be able to Timely next turn, hopefully. Never mind, they milled our Timely, targeting us with the Thought Scour. Let's just Pluta Delta, pass the turn. Plan on Hushing at end of turn. Another Thought Scour also targeting us. The sweet thing about that is they might put enough cards in our graveyard. We can just start casting Inverter of Truth. Bolt. All right, well, let's uh, hush wing now while your opponent's tapped out, or tapped down. Dark Slick Shores tapped. Let's crack Pluta Delta. Swamp. And yeah, we'll just get another dual land. Maybe Watery Grave. Ooh, Muddle. All right, let's play a Plains, attack with our hush wing Griff. Opponent goes to Bolt. Do we want to counter this? We can try to counter. Yeah, let's try to counter. Opponent's going to remand our muddle. All right, that's fine. And then we just got to pass. I think we will just try to resolve this inverter. We have enough stuff in our graveyard that it seems possible that it could work. Tasker, Young Pyromancer. No, Ghost Quarter, Inverter of Truth. So this is going to exile our library, and then we shuffle our graveyard back into our library. Opponent Thought Scours us. Oh, that's fine. That gives us more stuff in our library. Another Timely is good. So we have two Timelys, two Paths, two Serum Visions, and then a few random horrible lands. So that's not bad, actually. That kind of worked out. And we get to leave up this Muddle. So yep, Library Exiled, face down, 11 cards left. Opponents only got three cards in hand, and we do have Languish, and some good things to draw into. Cracks Delta, and we still have this Languish in our back pocket. If we get our opponent empty-handed, we can Gonna say hunted horror plus languish, but I don't know if we can do that in the same turn. Angler. All right, more big stuff. Gonna attack with Tassiger? Well, we will 100% block. No attacks. We draw Path, which is a pretty excellent draw. Um, let's just Ghost Quarter and Path, and well, Pass and most likely Path for now. Someone's gonna have Liquid Delver, a Mana Leak. I don't think is relevant. If we can get rid of the Angler and the Tassiger, then that turns on our languish. And then we should be able to win. Actually start attacking. Attacks with Angler and Elemental and Tassiger. And Elver. Four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's 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 path the Angler. Then block Tassiger. Take a little. Yep, there's Bolt targeting Inverter. So we get to Muddle to counter the Bolt. We know they just have Leak left in hand. They get a token. Delta... Ah, oh, man, I can't remember if we have a swamp left. One, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we can't, it doesn't matter anyway. So we get to attack with our inverter. Then we will languish away all our opponent's junk and hope the inverter gets us there. They just got a leak in hand, so they're going to have to draw pretty well uh, to get back into this. Wow, I did not expect we would win casting inverter naturally. What do we draw? Another path? All right, let's, uh, let's start attacking with colonnade as well. If we hit with Colonnade, then that means Shambling Vent is also lethal next turn. Just Shambling Vent. Woo! Man, all right. We got there somehow. <laughs> Exiled our library with Inverter of Truce, but got the win. All right, game three. We don't have any of our big hitters, but we do have a Hushwing and also a Languish, which could be really important. Island Nile Spellbomb. <laughs> They're going to get us when we... Uh, Go to play our inverter. Tricky. Tricky. Yeah, let's just go flooded strand. Pass the turn. Want to thin out our deck a bit if we can. I can't believe people are bringing in <laughs> inverter of truth. Eight. <laughs> people are actually sideboarding to beat it. We never plan on just casting it naturally. That's the whole point of this deck is to play the hush wings and so forth. Oh, there's a young pyromancer. Crack this. White, white, black, black, blue, blue. Uh, maybe we just get a basic? Can't even get a swamp. All right, we'll get Godless Shrine. Oh, Lord. All right. Watery Grave, pass the turn. Basically, our goal 
it looks like it is again going to be to work into a position where we can languish away our opponent's board and win. They only have three cards. It's a swamp. Duress. Well, there goes our languish. Well, it's kind of a bummer. All right, now we need another languish or just to go over the top of our opponent. Also possible. All right, swamp, go. Try to hush wing on our opponent's end of turn. Taken three, down to 14. All right, hush wing, see if it gets countered. Wouldn't be surprised. Yep, remand. Can't do much about that, unfortunately. Another hunted horror. Pass the turn. This time we might try to play a Hushwing to trade? I don't know. If we can stick a Hushwing, we can play Double Haunted Horror, and that's a big game. Crumble on our Watery Grave. All right, well, that means we need to Hushwing right now. They get rid of our Watery Grave and all our other Watery Graves. Unfortunately, we only have one Swamp, so it's going to be hard to play Double Haunted Horror this turn, unless we just randomly... Well, we don't even have Watery Graves. I don't think there's any way we're going to be able to do it then, honestly. Double would have been nice. All right, they're just going to go with tokens, not attack with Young Pyromancer. So we're going to go with a Hunted Horror, make a 7-7. Seven, seven. I mean, if they had a gut shot, that would be the biggest blowout. Play Hollow Fountain tapped, attack with Hushwing, and pass the turn. We still might be getting there somehow in a really strange way. Yep, there's Terminate. Takes down our Hunted Horror. Yep, take five. If they have another remand, then we're possibly dead. Um, all right, let's Haunted Horror. If they have a remand, it doesn't matter. If they have a Mana Leak, we're going to kick ourselves for not playing this land first. All right, that's down. Then we'll just play... Oh, man, I want this lifelink so bad. Yeah, I think we got to take the risk and just play Shambling Vent and pass the turn. If we play the Ghost Quarter, we could leave up Hushwing, but... All right, our opponent probes, takes a peek at our hand, and the lifelink on Shambling Vent could end up being relevant. What does our opponent have? Two cards in hand. Untap Watery Grave, oh boy. Angler, all right, Angler doesn't beat us. Opponent's gonna go attacking. All right, block Pyromancer, block a token. Down to four, we didn't wanna go to three because then we just died a bolt. Bolts us to one. How do we stay alive? We can't really Haunted Horror, because we don't have a Hushwing. Because we can activate this to block, and then play Hushwing, but the Hushwing can't block, so it doesn't do any good. I guess we can attack, and see if our opponent does something silly. They're going to crack their Nile Spell Bomb. I mean, our only hope is they, like, double block or do something weird. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we're still dead. Same scenario. Oh, he's so close! Oh, man. All right. Against the odds time, Inverter of Truth in Modern. We got our Dust Elemental, but we need a Torpor Orb. We got an Inverter of Truth as well. Uh, Hollow Fountain untapped Serum Visions. Ghost Quarter, Watery Grave, Shambling Vent. Let's put Watery Grave to the bottom, Shambling Vent to the top. We are going to want Black Mana, and then we can Serum Visions again next turn. Blood Crypt. All right, this might be a goy for a bob. Lotleth Troll. I guess we gotta kill that. Let's Serum Visions. There's a Torpor Orb. We need black for Inverter of Truth, so I guess we put on top, put on top. Then we play Planes. Get rid of the Lotleth Troll. Is our opponent gonna discard? No. Yep, there's Faithful Saluting. Pitches Avenge Vine and Arc Lightning. Bloodstain Mire. Just flashes back looting. All right, that's not too scary. Probably looking for a dredger. Yeah, they found a grave crawler. So let's torpor orb and shambling vents. Pass the turn. Now we're gonna be able to dust elemental with fear to eat one of our opponent's creatures, most likely. Oh, we do actually don't mind getting ghost quartered. Isn't that bad here? Uh, Cause we just get a swamp. Seder wayfinder doesn't mill anything cause of the torpor orb. Oh man, we're gonna get him. Another Inverter of Truth? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. We had that on top. Pass the turn. This has Flash, Fear, and Flying, and it's a 6-6. Six, six. What does our opponent have? Loam. Gets back a bunch of lands. Plays a Ghost Quarter. Ghost Quarters are Swamp. Well, let's, let's just tap our Swamp. Uh, the downside is we're going to be a long way away from casting our Inverter of Truth. The good news is Dust Elemental is going to close out this game super quick. 
Alright, let's go for it. If they have an abrupt decay, this sucks. And we probably lose. Because <laughs> we'll have to bounce our dust elemental back to our hand. Alright, no! No problem. Well, let's attack. Play Shambling Vent. Pass the turn. Can our opponent kill it? Now, now they abrupt, they waited until after we resolved the Dust Elemental, and then played Abrupt Decay? That was a very odd choice. Very odd. And scoops it up. <laughs> Alright. Well, I have a couple relics, which are good. And we just have a lot of weird big things. Language seems alright. We can get rid of the Thought Seas, I think, in a muddle. Alright, game two! Oh my goodness. That's a 7-lander. Can't keep that. Oy, that's not great, but Hollowed Fountain, uh, I don't think we want that now either. This might be the just jam and Eater of Days hand and see what happens. Alright, Godless Shrine, pass the turn. <laughs> this deck. I guess we could draw a Torpor Orb or a Griff in the meantime. Wayfinder, Looting, Murderous Cut, and a Land. I guess we should leave the graveyard open. Flooded Strand... Uh, I think we just got a pass here. I don't think we can play the Hunted Horror. I think we just lose to the tokens it makes. Black Cleave Cliffs. Lotleth Troll. We probably will have to kill that, though. Discards. Alright, let's crack this. Get a Watery Grave. Untapped. And just dismember this Lotleth Troll so they can't immediately cast that Gravecrawler. Hopefully they don't have another Gravecrawler in their hand. Or else then we lose. They could cast Gravecrawler, get back Fengevine, and we're just dead. Or almost dead. Alright. They do not. Well, yeah, they would have done it before combat so they could attack. Ooh, Hushwing is good. Hushwing is really good. Alright, pass the turn. Now we get to Hushwing into Eater, <laughs> into Eater of Days, of all things. Hope our opponent doesn't have a way to kill the Hushwing. Or that they tap out. Looting, sure. Tapped. Oh, we get free reign. We're gonna, we're gonna do it. Eater of Days is coming down. <laughs> Good luck, opponent. Oh, lord, this deck. This deck keeps winning somehow. Alright, hush, Hushwing Griff. Step one. Ghost Quarter. Get to play in Eater of Days. Only a 9-8 for four with Flying and Trample. And since we have Hushwing Griff, we don't have to skip our next two turns. <laughs> I'm not sure how our opponent plans on winning now. I guess they could have a murderous cut for Eater of Days. <laughs> that is so big. So big. Oh, really? So they do have a murderous cut and an abrupt decay. That's a bummer. Opponent had it all. All the outs. Um, well, let's hunt it, horror. Give our opponent some tokens, but get a 7 7. Play the Ghost Quarter. Pass the turn. We can path one of them. Wow, what are they doing? Another murderous cut? Oh, they have another abrupt decay? Oh, uh, well, I guess our opponent just kind of had the nuts this time. They are going to be out of cards, which is good. Uh, now we're dead. Our opponent had it all! Every single perfect card. Okay. Alright. Alright. None of our big things, but we do have a griff. A removal spell and a languish, which seems like a good gotcha card. Looting. Pitch is looting Vengevine. Um, alright, let's play Pluto Delta. Pass the turn. Catacombs cracks it. Lotleth Troll. Well, let's crack this. Get a Watery Grave. Untapped. Dismember the Lotleth Troll. Ooh, there's a Relic. Alright, well, we're going to slow down our plans for a minute to play this Relic. And I think we just pass for now. If they want to flash back a Faithless Looting before we can exile it, that's fine. It just puts more stuff in the graveyard for us. They just exile everything for an Angler. Interesting. Well, let's crack the Relic. Another Hushwing isn't great. Eater of Days might help. Alright, let's pass the turn. Depends on how many more removal spells our opponent has. Alright, down to ten. Opponent has a land untapped. Well, let's Hushwing. Then we'll play an Eater of Days. If they have second Abrupt Decay plus Murderous Cut, then good for them. Alright, they Murderous Cut. Sure. 
So we're going to have to skip two turns, which means if they can uh, have another murderous cut, then we're in trouble. But they don't have, seem to have much going on, so we'll see. I mean, murderous cut and we're dead. That's the story. Alright, first turn skipped. Duress can take our languish. Do they have a murderous cut and they were trying to get a card in the graveyard? No way! <laughs> we just skipped we just skipped two turns and it worked. There is no way <laughs> that that should work. No way in the world that that should work. Yeah, let's not even play Torpor Orb. Let's just pass. <laughs> oh, that that is one of the more against the odds things that's happened in quite a while. We'll just skip three turns <laughs> and have it pay off. All right, we'll exile a card, the dress. Play this Hushwing Griff. Do we really just get to attack and win? <laughs> we do. <laughs> Well, that is not how we drew it up. We had to skip two turns to play an Eater of Days. Uh, but that was still just good enough. Oh, lord. <laughs> Alright, against the odds, can we keep the good times rolling? Oh, can we keep just path and lands? Probably not. Well, that's like the nuts. Thought Seize, Water Grave tapped. Next turn we can Thought Seize, Torpor Orb, hopefully draw land and Verter of Truce win. Oh, no thought sees. Come on. Inquisition. <laughs> it probably takes our Torpor Orb. Alright, they take Path. Well, let's thought sees. Path, Path, Helix. Well, I guess we take a Path because it can actually kill our stuff. I don't know what we're up against. Mardu? Is this the Mardu deck that Ben Stark played? Alright, let's Torpor Orb. Polluted Delta. Crack this. Get another Watery Grave. Not a land. All right, I guess we just pass, even though this doesn't feel great. We know they have a path to kill our first inverter. You can attack with a Chambling Vent? Yep. All right, well, I guess we just path it. There's Flooded Strand. All right, Flooded Strand, crack it, get a Island, Inverter of Truth. Expect this to get pathed. All right, they go with the path right away plan. So we'll just get a Swamp. Hope we draw more big things. Godless Shrine. All right, let's see what we draw. Ghost Quarter. All right, let's transmute muddle the mixture. Get a Hunted Horror. Play Hunted Horror. Play Ghost Quarter. Pass the turn. Do they have an answer for the Hunted Horror? They're down two pass. Another land. Fulminator Mage. <laughs> sure. You gonna blow up some of our lands? Man, another Inverter or an Eater of Days would be awesome. Serum Vision is reasonable. Hushwing Griff. Well, let's put Path on top and Eater of Days as our next draw. And then get in with our Hunted Horror. Put our opponent down to 11. Pass the turn. Shambling Vent. Oh, man, we're going <laughs> to... This is going to be sweet. All right, let's uh, play Hushwing Griff. Let's attack with both. They might helix the griff. They're going to chump the hunted horror. Bolt the griff. Alright, they're going to need a Coligan's command or something. You'd think they would have played it on our upkeep if they had it. Eater of days! <laughs> oh, our poor opponent. What do you think they're thinking over there? What, they just have a handful of burn spells to throw at our Hunted Horror? <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> oh, Lord. This deck should not be winning as much as it is. That's that's pretty ridiculous. I wouldn't mind having more Thought Seizes. I guess we can go down Dismember for a Thought Seize. Go down Dust Elemental for a Thought Seize. Try it like that. Alright, game two against Mardu. Hunted Horror, Hushwing Griff, Eater of Days, we'll give it a shot. Wouldn't mind finding a Torpor Orb. Alright, Polluted Delta, go. Black Cleave Cliffs, and there's Dark Confidant. Alright, Polluted Delta, let's get a 
Watery Grave. Thoughtseize, take Helix, play Watery Grave. What do they hit with Bob? Ghost Quarter, all right. They might just go Lingering Souls here. Yep, Lingering Souls, and attack with Bob. Yeah, let's play Flooded Strand, pass the turn. Gets a land with Bob. We can attack with Shambling Vet. Oh man, <laughs> the floodgates have opened. All right, we take a beating, down to nine. Crack Flooded Strand, get a Plains, play Hushwing Griff, play a Plains, play Eater of Days, see if they have a Terminate or something. Attack with our Griff, no Terminate. Uh, Mountain, off of Bob. Thought Seas, probably takes our Languish. Yep, takes Languish. Oh man, our opponent got it all. Well, now we're kind of in trouble. We're taking four, and they get to flash back their Lingering Souls. Yeah, we're pretty close to dead. Oh, that was a disastrous turn. They have the Thought Seas and the Path. Yeah, that does it. Ugh. We saw their drawing, and they hit land, land, land with Bob, so in between all those lands, they apparently drew Path and Thought Seas. All right, game three against Mardu. Let's get it. And, all right, reasonable-ish. All right, Pluto Delta, go. All right, let's get a Godless Shrine, Pluto Delta, crack it, get an Island, play Torpor Orb. They got the Bob. Uh, they wear our Torpor Orb. All right. Uh, let's just play Ghost Quarter and pass. We can uh, play our Hushwing. There's Bob. And a Tap Land. All right, Hushwing end of turn, and then if we just draw a big thing, we can play it. Blue to Delta. Well, let's Serum Visions. Jeez, bad news. Bottom, bottom. Attack with our Hushwing. Play Blue to Delta. Pass the turn. That was a horrible Serum Visions. They hit a Colgan's Command off the Bob. Thought Seize, take our Muddle the Mixture. And Helix, our Hushwing. Ay, ay, ay. All right, crack Blue to Delta. Get a Godless Shrine. Jeez, we're just drawing only lands. Well, this has been bad running. Extremely bad running. Liliana, not too relevant. There's Liliana. Discard. We're almost to the point where we're just hoping our opponent somehow kills himself with Bob. Flood Strand, get a Watery Grave. Oh my god. Oh, so many lands. Lingering Souls for our opponent. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we'll have 14 lands out of our deck in 17 cards, or 18 cards. That is a insanely high land percentage. There's Lingering Souls. I guess the only good news is this means eventually we're going to have to stop drawing lands because there aren't going to be any left in our deck. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. 10 lands out of 43 cards. So the odds of drawing more are pretty slim. Hunted Horror, we can't cast. We're essentially dead. I guess we just have to pass and discard this Watery Grave. Bloodstained Mire for our opponent. Problem is they can Colgan's Command and Ileana, and then we're empty-handed. Well, this was a pretty, pretty rough draw. Rough draw. Fetch Land, Shambling Vent. Well, we're going to Ghost Quarter that. Ghost Quarter, Shambling Vent. Oh, down to five. Oh, man, they have something else? Flashback Lingering Souls. Well, Timely is not the worst of draws. Gives us some things. Gains us some life. Oh, Helix means it's less likely our opponent's going to bob themselves out. Pumps up Liliana. Empty-handed. They discard another Lingering Souls. I don't think we block the bob. We want the bob to live. Our best bet is, like... Well, I don't even know, because they got that Helix. Oh, they, they just drew enough burn to kill us. Uh, well, that was, that was a rough draw. Very rough. All right, against odds. Looking to invert some truth into modern. Inverted orb. Uh, yeah. I mean, we got the, the combo and a path. All right, Shambling Vents, go. Ugh, Tron. I'm not sure this is going to be good enough against Tron. We need to draw 
path, uh, not path, ghost quarter, quickly. Torpor orb, go. Thing is, just an inverter of truth isn't necessarily good enough, because we play inverter of truth, they play Tron, we lose. Or Karn, off of Tron, and we lose. There's the mine, chromatic sphere, cracks it. And we draw a second torpor orb, sure why not. Flooded strand, pass the turn. Oh, and they naturally have it. Hey, <laughs> that be a Karn. Goes after our hand. All right, exile the swamp. Yeah, I don't think we can win from here. I don't even, it's hard to imagine a combination of draws that lets us beat this. All right, crack, crack flooded strand, get a watery grave. Muddle, not helpful. Crack delta, uh, get a godless shrine. Inverter. <laughs> <laughs> just does not match up well against a Karn. Once they new Converter, we probably just scoop. And they don't. They have another way of killing it? They have 10 mana. I mean, if they have Ulamog. Yup. Alrighty then. Ay, alright. Well, we want to draw Ghost Quarters. I guess Negates and Thought Seizes are also decent. Muddle, not great. Dismember, bad. And go down a path? Alright. We get to play first, have some big threats, no real disruption though. Our opponent's mulliganing, that's good. We get to turn to Torpor Orb, turn to Torpor Orb, turn to Torpor Orb, into um, a Hunted Horror, that might be a thing. Another Inverter, then we basically just hope we draw another land, and can just play a bunch of big things and maybe win before our opponent puts together Tron. They did mulligan once, there's the orb, also they could have brought in nature's claim or something and then this hunted horror is horrible for us instead of our opponent cracks chromatic sphere oh, are they just oh, they're gonna have tron anyway Ugh. come on ghost quarter eater of days so oh, we have all of our big stuff well there's hunted horror it's big but doesn't matter against a karn and there's tron I guess our best bet is we just keep drawing lands and playing big things, and maybe that will get through the Karn eventually. But we need a land here. All right, Flooded Strand, crack it, get a Plains. Actually, even better, we can pass, wait till our opponent activates Karn, and then Dust Elemental, and then kill the Karn. All right, there, uh, actually, we don't kill the Karn, but we hurt the Karn. Inverter of Truth, down. Flash, Flying Fear, 6-6 six, six for 6. Normally you have to return 3 creatures you control to your hand, but we avoid that. Worm Coil. Alright. And Expedition Map. Well, here comes Dusty. We get to... <laughs> we're we're going to try to play through this, aren't we? We get to attack the Karn. Yeah, I think we have to, or else they just exile it. So Karn goes to 1. Then we'll play an Eater of Days. <laughs> oh, we're playing a lot of big things. Oh, man. They have an Inverter of Truth exiled with Karn. If they restart it, if they, that's like the ultimate tech to stop Karn ultimate. If they ultimated, they would immediately... <laughs> immediately... <laughs> they would immediately exile their entire library and lose on their, their first draw step for the turn zero loss. <laughs> oh, come on. Tell me you don't have Ulamog. Alright, Chromatic Star isn't Ulamog. Exiles in another Inverter of Truth. Oh, I no, that would be that would be the greatest way to win a game ever is get an Inverter exiled with Karn. Opponent restarts the game. There's not really any way to control that and who knows how many hundreds of thousands of matches it would take to happen. But that could happen. That is within the realm of possibilities. Opponents comboing off, playing things, doing stuff, passes. If they have nothing, then suddenly... Wow. All right. So we get to kill the Karn, attack our opponent for nine. Nine. So we can attack for 15, 21, 22, 23. Oh, my God. We might be... If our opponent is on blanks, we can do this. If our opponent's on blanks, we can win next turn. We can attack for exactly 23 damage. Inverter of Truth. 
All right, we just hope our opponent has nothing. Nine plus six is 15, plus six is 21, plus shambling vent for two. So if our opponent just attacks and passes, we win. There's the attack, they go up to 23. Oh man, are we gonna win this? Are we seriously gonna win this? We have the royal flush of big things, come on. No Oblivion Stones or Karns or Eldrazi. Anything, basically, no anything. Six mana, eight mana. They're just gonna search? What do they search for? If they cast another Worm Coil, then we can't win next turn. Ulamog, oh my god, are we gonna do this? Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> All right, tell me you don't have an instant speed way of ruining this. That should be 23. Oh, no way. That. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> oh man, so obviously we went on to lose that third game against Tron, uh, so I didn't want to show it. I wanted to end on the sweet high note of the <laughs> insane win. Uh, so what did we learn this week? Um, Inverter of Truth in that deck was better than I imagined. We actually won... 7 out of 14 games, so we were exactly 50% in winning games, and we won 2 out of our 5 matches, which isn't a winning record, but it's still a reasonable record. So, why this deck isn't tier 1 or anything, it's actually playable, and I think that the secret sauce that makes it all work is the fact that we play some threats that are just so big that it puts this immense pressure on our opponent. Like, yes, we're inconsistent, yes, we can get blown out by Abrupt Decay on Torpor Orb, or on our griff, but when we get a 9-8 down on turn 4, or a 6-6 six, six inverter of truth, that's just such a fast clock that our opponent has to have an answer within a turn or two, or they just just lose the game. So, so it doesn't give our opponent much time to find an answer. So that is basically what the deck does, and it does it pretty well. And so, I don't know, I think there's a bunch of different ways you could potentially build Inverter of Truth. You could do like a Suicide Black Aggro deck, obviously the Laboratory Maniac combo, but I think this one's pretty sweet and it might be the most competitive out of all of them. So, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So again, 50% game win percentage, 40% uh, match win percentage, which for an against the odds deck is pretty stellar. So I'm really happy and it was a blast to play. We had a ton of crazy things happen, uh, some really cool and exciting plays and got to just smash with some really big creatures that don't see play. Plus, we also got to play Eater of Days, which is a card that's been on the against the odds poll for so long, came so close to winning, but just never went over the hump. So we got the sweet two for one with both Inverter of Truth and Eater of Days in the same deck. Anyway, make sure to check out the website, mtggoldfish.com. That's where you'll find the article for this Against the Odds, the poll for next week's Against the Odds. Also, decks, prices, metagame strategy, pretty much everything and anything you could want related to Magic the Gathering. And if you enjoyed our Inverter of Truth slash Eater of Days Against the Odds, make sure to click the subscribe button that's about to pop up on the bottom of your screen. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the videos, and I will talk to you soon.